So, have you ever looked over someone's shoulder as they pipe together a series of commands and perform what looks like black magic? And then you go back to your machine and you try and replicate it and the results are, well, less than ideal. Well, if so, this is just the video for you. Let's get right into it. First, a quick rehash of the basics. You'll hear a lot of the terms that mean basically the same thing. Shell, terminal, console, command line. The shell, like bash or zish, is what actually does the work. Your terminal or console or command line is the program that lets you interface with the shell. But in conversation, the difference doesn't really matter. And for brevity, I'm just gonna call it the shell. Now for some commands. ls lists the contents of the target directory. With most commands, you'll be passing in a series of arguments after the name of it. For instance, with ls, you can pass some flags such as dash latrh, which is to put it in a long list format, showing all files, sorted by time, in reverse, with human readable file sizes. You can also pass in some direct arguments, like a file path, such as ls.config, and you'll often pass in some combination of both of these. cd lets you change directory, pwd shows you the full path to your current working directory, echo lets you print some text, cat lets you print the contents of a file, touch will create a file if it doesn't exist, or update the timestamps if it does. CP, or copy, lets you copy a file or directory to a target destination. MV, or move, is like a copy, but moves it instead. You'll find many of these Unix tools share similar patterns. So with both copy and move, you first define the source files, and then you define the destination. So RM deletes files, if you want to delete a directory, you'll use dash "-r", for recursive. That's another common pattern. If you want to YOLO it, you can add "-f", to that to get "-rm-rf", which will force delete the files recursively. And if you run "-rm-rf-", slash, you're going to have a bad day, because you're going to be deleting all the files in your system. ln lets you create a symlink to a file in another location. Less lets you view text contents in a scrollable format. For large files, this is usually more useful than cat, as you can jump around and search using less. More is less than less, letting you view text contents, but only going forward. So you may be familiar with the common convention of having a dash dash help option for most tools that will instruct you on how to use it. And it's often good enough but sometimes you need to access the real good stuff, and you can do that using man. And you might scoff at the idea of using a manual in the 2020s, but rest assured, uh, spending five minutes reading the manual is gonna give you a far better return on your investment of time than reading a blog post on Medium or Stack Overflow in most cases. All right, moving on. Grep lets you pattern match against text content. You'll be using this one a lot, though you might want to install ripgrep, it's like grep, but faster. Find will, unsurprisingly, find files and directories. The syntax can be funky, so you might want to install fd. It's basically a faster and easier to use version of find. sed is a stream editor, which lets you make changes to an incoming stream of text. You'll usually use this to find and replace text. If you've ever used a vim-based editor, you'll be familiar with the syntax. Quick sed tip for you. If you ever find yourself editing something that has a bunch of backslashes, like a URL, and you're getting annoyed at having to escape all the characters, you can actually use any character as the delimiter. Uh, just make sure that the character isn't in your text. But look at that. Now, you might ask, should you use Z as your delimiter? And the answer is probably not. But you can, and that's cool. Awk is confusing, but often quite useful. So it's a programming language focused on text processing, but you'll typically only ever use it for little one-liners. It's the perfect tool to extract data out of specific positions in a text, like based on which column it's in. Sort will sort text contents. It defaults to alphabetic, but you've also got a bunch of options like dash N for numeric, or dash capital R for random. Head lets you see the first few lines of a file, 
and you can pass in the number of lines with dash n. Tail is the opposite. It looks at the end of a file. You can add a dash f to follow as new lines are appended to the file. And this can be super handy when looking at log files. Now this is a good time to discuss piping. Quite often, you'll want to take the output from one command and pass it into the next command. And this is where the pipe operator comes in. It's super simple, yet powerful. You write your first command, and then add a pipe, and then your next command. So it'll take the standard out from your first command and pass it into the standard in of your next command. You can keep chaining together pipes and commands to build out a pipeline. You'll frequently end up catting the contents of a file and then piping it into grep to filter it or sed to replace its contents. Xargs will take the contents of whatever you pipe into it and split it into different chunks. And for each chunk, it'll pass it in as an argument to whatever command you specify. And this can be super handy when you pull a big list of files or resources and then filter it down using something like grep and then you run a deletion command, letting xargs handle passing in the right values. There's another tool in the arsenal you'll often find yourself using either instead of or in combination with pipelines, and that's the subshell. The syntax is a dollar sign with parentheses and your command inside of it. So you can run a singular command or a full pipeline within that subshell. Then the output of the command or set of commands will essentially be injected into the spot where the subshell was defined. Another thing you'll want to know is redirection. You can write the standard out of a command to a file using the greater than operator, followed by the target file. Note this will overwrite an existing file, so do be careful. If you do two of them, it will append to the file instead of overwriting it if it already exists, or it creates it if it doesn't. You can also go the other direction by using the less than to pass file contents into the standard in. You're not going to use that one too often, but you can. Perhaps my favorite utility of all is fzf, which is a fuzzy finder. If you just run fzf, it'll load the current file tree into the fuzzy finder, but you can also pass in a text stream using pipes and chain together some really useful workflows we'll take a look at. There are a lot more commands you can use, and far too many for this video, but you can list them all using compgen-c, and you can pipe that into less to make it easier to navigate things. All right. Now for some fun combinations that'll surely impress your coworkers and friends. Or might get you bullied. I don't know. No promises. So here's a quick utility that combines that compgen command with fuzzy find and man. So we take compgen, we pass that into the fuzzy finder, and then we pipe that into man using xargs to handle that. And so now you can fuzzy find any command in your system and pull up its manual. And when you come up with something handy like this, you can create an alias for it like so. So alias, in this case, fman equals, and then my pipeline. And now whenever I run that fman command, it'll execute that full pipeline. You can also dump that into your config file for your shell, such as the .bashrc or .zsharc, and it'll be available on each new shell session. Here's one for working with Kubernetes, where it'll list all of the available pods, then let you select the desired pod, and then run kube control to describe it. So keep control, get pods, and then we pass it into fcf. Then we use awk to grab both the pod name and the namespace. And then we use xargs to handle taking those variables and put them into keep control describe in the right spots. This next one will find the biggest files and directories in a given path, which is handy for finding out where you might want to clean up. So du will find file sizes, and we're using the um, aggregate view, as well as we're using the human readable text. Then we're sorting that in reverse order, and then we are using head to see the top 10. A similar one, if you ever find yourself running out of space due to too many node projects, you'll love this. We use find to grab all the node modules, starting at this uh, subtree, and then we use du with xargs to actually find what the size of each directory is. Then we're going to sort it based on the size um, in reverse order. Then we pass it into fuzzy find. And this one we're using the multi-select option. So we can actually select multiple directories here. And we're using a header so that we're able to actually understand what operation we're about to perform. Um, and we've got a preview here where it's going to show the package.json 
over on the right so we can see some context about what this is related to. Then we use awk to pull the file path or the directory path and then use xargs with rm-rf to delete it. So as you can see, I really love FCF. <laughs> you can do so much with it. So these types of things you can set up an alias for or you can dump them into a bash script. That way you can define it once and use it forever. Also, you can run history to see your previous command runs so you can run them again if you've lost the context. All right, before we wrap things up, we should talk about some useful shell hotkeys. Now you probably know about control C to kill your active process and maybe control D to exit your shell. And maybe you've seen control L to clear the screen. To jump to the front of your line, use control A. Control E will bring you to the end. Alt F moves one word forward and Alt B moves one word back. You can also do control F and control B to go one character at a time. Though you could also just use arrow keys. Control K will delete everything after your cursor, and Control U will delete everything before your cursor. Though this one doesn't seem to work in Zeesh, just Bash. Control Z will put the current process into the background, and you can use the FG command to bring it back to the foreground. You can use Bang Bang to run the previous command, and if you do Bang followed by some command, it'll run the most recent command beginning with your query. And a fun one you can use whenever you realize you've made a real mess and it's getting too long. If you hit Control X, Control E, it'll open up your current command in your editor so you can more easily edit some long chain. And then when you save it, it'll update the line in your shell. So there are a bunch more. If you have a specific movement you do regularly, it's worth looking up to see if there's a hotkey for it. Okay, so we've covered a lot here and the chances are you'll forget most of it almost instantly because in truth, this stuff really only sticks in your head when you regularly use it. The key things I'd take away from this are, one, use the man pages or TLDR when you want to figure out how to use a command. They're super helpful. Two, use pipelines and subshells to make your life easier. Three, use aliases and scripts to save the work you've done. And four, lastly, use FZF. It's amazing. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.